Hello and welcome to another Java tutorial working with loops. In this tutorial we will try to convert the do while loop that we created in our last example into a for loop. The for loop is the most concise and to the point and an awesome loop when it comes to account control loops. In account control loop you need to have a starting point, an ending point and a process of going from start to an end. And the good thing about for loop is it codes all three things in one place as opposed to being in three different places. So if I had to change this logic to work for for loop, I could have all three of them in one place. My starting point, my ending condition and a process of go from start to end. So first of all I move things around, I got rid of my do, I don't need my while, and now I'm going to start coding my for loop. So starting point. My starting point is that my counter must start from 1 because I'm still printing numbers 1 through 10. Then I must have my ending condition which is the same as long as the counter is less than equals to 10. Then I need my increment which is over here increment by 1 so I can pack all three things in the same place and would not have to worry about writing them in three different places. Now since there is only one line of code associated with the loop, therefore writing the curly braces now becomes optional. And this program will going to do exactly the same thing as the previous program is doing. The only thing different is in this example I did not change the name of the file which I could change to for loop java and I can rename the loop name over here because the name of the class name of the file must match rerun it does exactly the same thing displays numbers 1 through 10 so this is how for loop makes your life so much easier by putting everything in one place However, we're also going to look at some of the variations of for loop. Sometimes we do end up declaring a variable ahead of time outside of the for loop. In that case, do I need to repeat the declaration? No, you don't. All you got to do is put a semicolon in the placeholder of the first instruction. It automatically will going to tell the compiler that check the variable in the condition the variable in the condition must have been initialized somewhere up top. If it is not, I'm going to give you error message anyway that the variable in the condition not found. If it is found, that means the variable must have been declared somewhere before the for loop and might have also been initialized. So now when I run this program, it works exactly the same way as it was working before. Similarly, for some reason, if you would like to put the ending condition in the body of the loop as opposed to writing it up top in the for structure you could also do that and now when I run it the output still comes out to be same however the only thing that you gotta be careful about is in your for loop instruction I'm, I'm putting spaces for readability however if I write it like this will do exactly the same thing so just make sure that you have semicolons in both sides on both sides of the condition as required by the syntax and then will automatically figure out that if the increment is not written over there then must be part of the body if it is not part of the body then you will gonna run into an infinite loop so this is how you can be writing your for loops in different ways and it will gonna understand all of these ways hope you would have enjoyed watching this tutorial catch you in another one take care